Portable power stations are becoming more and more popular, whether it's for van life, camping, backup power at home, or like us tradespeople, power out on your job site, they are more and more becoming an essential for everyday life. And when it comes to portable power stations, two names keep popping up more and more these days. The EcoFlow Delta 2 Max and the brand new DJI Power 2000. On paper, both of these look impressive, but the real question is, which one is best? Well, in this video, we're putting them head to head, digging in to all the features, the pros and cons, along with some real world tests to find out. And make sure you watch to the end where we give our verdict on which one we think deserves your money. So without further ado, let the battle commence. So first of all, the EcoFlow Delta 2 Max. This is a 2048 watt hour battery, expandable up to 6,144 watts. What that means is you can essentially plug in two additional battery packs to this to expand the system. It has a peak output of 2.4 kilowatts or 2,400 watts, but that can be boosted up to 3,100 watts with the X boost feature. In terms of charge time, it takes 43 minutes to charge up to 80%. And that can be from AC via a mains plug or from solar via the two PV input ports at the front of the battery. In terms of cycle life, it's guaranteed for 10 years or 3,000 full cycles. It's LFP battery chemistry, which pretty much all of these are these days. That stands for lithium iron phosphate and it's a very safe battery chemistry. It weighs 23 kilos or 50 pounds and you can input up to a thousand watts of solar in here, stringing up temporary solar panels and plugging them in to the solar PV ports at the front. In terms of special features, it has the X boost feature, which allows you to push out a bit of extra power up to 3,100 watts. It has a smart app, which enables you to control it remotely from your phone and see what's going on. And it is expandable up to 6,000 watt hours, as we mentioned. The cycle life is 3,000 full cycles or 10 years. After 3,000 cycles, you should still see 80% battery life. So let's talk about the ports. We've got four AC mains plug sockets. We've got a 12 volt cigarette lighter style socket, two PV inputs. We've got the two battery expansion ports on the back. And on this side, we've got the USB sockets. We've got four USB A sockets and two USB C sockets, which can output up to 100 watts. Two of the USB A sockets are also fast charge. And you've got Bluetooth connectivity to pair this to other devices. So now let's compare it to the brand new DJI Power 2000. So this is the brand new DJI Power 2000. And this also is a 2048 watt hour battery, but it is expandable up to 22 kilowatt hours. In other words, you can daisy chain up to 10 of these together for a huge amount of portable power, much more than the EcoFlow actually. In terms of the peak power output of this thing, it's 3000 watts standard. No boosting involved, you can pull 3000 watts from it. And we're gonna try that out in a real world test later in the video. It will recharge up to 80% within 45 to 50 minutes. So very similar to the EcoFlow. And the battery life is actually better at 4000 cycles. You should still have 80% capacity remaining. It's slightly lighter than the EcoFlow at 22 kilos or about 48 and a half pounds. Similar to the EcoFlow, you've got two solar ports, but the DJI battery supports up to 1.8 kilowatts of solar input. And you can do combined charging, plugging it into your car charge port via the 12 volt socket and having panels connected to it for solar power and charging with both. Now this has got built in UPS. What does that mean? Well, you can have it constantly plugged into your mains so it stays charged, but have essential devices running off of it. And in the event that the mains cuts out, it will instantly switch over within 0.01 seconds to the battery power, enabling you to preserve power to all of those important devices without even a blip. Now, because it's DJI, of course, they've thought about drones. Now, we carry drones around with us a lot. 
If you're a filmmaker or you like to travel and bring your drone with you, you want somewhere to charge your drone up, right? And so they've included SDC ports in here for drone charging. But these SDC ports can also be used for the expansion to link to DJI's expansion battery modules. And as I said, the expansion possibilities are enormous. With four kilowatt hour expansion batteries available, you could daisy chain multiple batteries to increase your capacity. And of course, DJI have a great app that you can use to control and monitor your battery. Now, in terms of ports, this has four AC ports like the EcoFlow. It's got four USB-C ports, and then you've got four USB-A ports, which are all 24 watts. You've got the mains adapter input here, the two SDC ports. Now there's a slight change here as well that the AC power input to this has a couple of screws to secure it into place. I quite like that because these kind of things can get put in places where it's easy to trip over a cable and it get pulled out of the socket. And of course, if you don't realize and it stops charging, you're out of power. So having the AC port secured into place is a nice little feature. Now, if you'd like to find out more about either of these products, I'll leave links below where you can buy them. So now, time for some real world tests. And the first and most important test is always the kettle test. Whether you're out camping, whether you're on site, you want a nice cup of tea. So let's plug this kettle into the DJI first and see how it handles it. We're at 40% charge and this bad boy is outputting 2,335 watts to heat the kettle. And it says that it would actually run at that rate for 16 minutes based on the current state of charge, which is quite impressive. And we'll do the exact same test with the EcoFlow. The EcoFlow is also at 40%, so we'll be able to gauge exactly how they compare side by side. Really ready? There we go. So we're down to zero watts again. The kettle is bulled so we can have a nice cup of tea and we're at 32%, so it's taken 8% of our battery life. Let's see how it compares with the EcoFlow. This is a very scientific test. It's got to be exactly on six cups. All right, so the screen is on the opposite side. It's not as easy to see, but let's double check the percentage on this. So we're on 40% on this as well. So let's flick the switch and see what happens. 18 minutes left and the output is 2,355 watts. Pretty much exactly what it was with the other one. We're already down at 39% now. But 18 minutes is more than the DJI was saying, so that's interesting. Remember we got to 32% on that one. Let's see how much we end up left once the kettle's boiled with this one. Well, they're bang on exactly the same, 32% for this one too. So they've both coped pretty well with that test. Let's move on to the next one. That is a proper sack of tea bags. There we go. Can't beat a cup of Yorkshire tea. Right, so now the question is, how many devices can we plug into this thing? Can we actually overload it? Like, where is it gonna max out at? So of course I've got my DJI Mini Pro 2, I think it is, drone batteries. So they definitely need to go on there and I'm gonna plug them into these 24 watt USB-A sockets. I've got my laptop as well. And of course, every YouTuber has a set of wireless mics that definitely need charging. My Unilight head torch, which is absolutely essential for working in dark lofts. Okay, so we've got all of these devices plugged into the USB sockets so far, but we're still only at like 31 watts. So I'm gonna plug the Hilti battery charger in. Should start to ramp up. Okay, there we go. 293 watts. So we're gonna have to do more. Now we've got this studio light. I think I'm gonna unplug the laptop because the laptop's not pulling much power anyway. And then I'll plug the studio light in. That brings us up to 469 watts, which means that if we turn this kettle on now, we should be over the 3000 watt mark. Um, 
that'll be really interesting to see what happens. Now it is rated at 3000 watt output, so it might just trip out, but let's see. Okay, 2800 watts actually. So it's still below the 3000 watt mark and it seems to be handling it absolutely fine. Right, we're really trying here. We've plugged so many things in and we still can't push it over the three kilowatt mark. So I'm gonna swap the laptop for the Henry Hoover. And that works great. So when you're camping, if you wanna hoover up in your tent, you can do that. And now here's the true test. We'll turn the kettle on. 3,300 watts. Okay, and there it's tripped overload. So, okay, it's done what we expected it to do. It's protected itself, which is good. Now, let's try the same thing with the EcoFlow. Hoover, battery charger, uh, so light. 497 watts, let's try. Uh, the hoover and the kettle, and then we'll see what happens. So hoover, we're now at 1,130 watts, and then the kettle, boom. Oh wow, okay, that's a trip straight away. <laughs> yeah, that, that went up to about three and a half kilowatts. So that's to be expected. They've both kind of done what they should do, I guess. Okay, so this will be interesting. So we're running this at 2,400 watts now. Um, now it's got the X boost feature, which should allow it to boost up to the 3.1 kilowatt, but I'm guessing that's only for a few seconds. Ah, I forgot to turn those on. So that's, okay, that's boosting it up a little bit now. So it did allow us to run about two and a half kilowatts for about a minute, and then it just stopped. So that X boost feature seems to only last for a certain amount of time. Um, it's handy but obviously the overall constant loading is gonna to have to be below 2.3, otherwise it is gonna cut out after a little while. So the X boost really is just to cover those spikes. What about the DJI? So if we go back to this one and plug everything back, we'll do the exact same test. And we're at two and a half kilowatt now. In theory, this one should just constantly run at two and a half kilowatts because the max rated output of this battery is three kilowatts so actually we spiked up to 2.8 now and i would expect it to just stay like that it can cope with it but let's see now in terms of these two units they do look quite similar although the dji i think i prefer it in terms of the aesthetics it's got more of like a square shape so i think it will fit better and if you want to stack it with other items, other square items, it just sort of fits. So I think ergonomically, it works a little, little bit better, but overall they both look pretty smart. So that's it, we've been pulling 2.8 kilowatts from this thing, 2,800 watts for several minutes, and it's been absolutely fine, it's not tripped, which shows that the rated output of that unit that they claim is correct and it does give you that edge over the EcoFlow in this particular case. So now we're gonna do a charging speed test to see how fast these two charge up. And the DJI has a secret weapon here because it's got this boost mode switch. And if we flick that on, it's gonna charge up even faster than normal. So they're both at 4% charge now. We're gonna give it 10 minutes and see where they get to. So in terms of the charge speed, they're pretty much identical. The EcoFlow did go slightly faster at some points, but then the DJI seemed to catch up. And they both ended up with more or less the same charge percentage after 10 minutes. So my final thoughts. Well, one thing I've noticed is that the EcoFlow is quite loud. The DJI is very quiet, and that's one thing I really like about the DJI. This one has a much higher output capacity. And in fact, 3000 watts is kind of the sweet spot because that can pretty much power any home appliance. Now, one thing I really like about the DJI is these fast USB-C charging ports. It means you can plug, for example, a MacBook Pro 16 inch straight into here instead of having to use the AC wall block and it will charge up to 50% in just 30 minutes. So this amazing piece of kit is definitely going into my permanent toolkit. For the van it's great to be able to power up customers routers when you're doing EICRs to be able to charge all your power tools in the back of the van 
amazing bit of kit. And if you want to get one of these at a 20% discount until the 14th of October, use the link in the description below.